Hey guys, welcome back. Man, we have been working all day. I'm going to show you what we've done. And uh, man, so putting these tires on, these are 26 tall. And, you know, we probably should have just ran like 24 tall and not tried to get the ride height awesome. But we're really trying to get this thing to fit. And uh, as you might notice, we've been cutting a lot of metal out of the car. See all this stuff that's got X's? All that. I mean, it's already been heavily modified, but all that stuff with X's is coming out too. And then across the back, you can see we cut a little bit of it out. That over there is kind of roughed. And then you can actually see the top of the wheel well and over on this side, on this side you can't. Man, I'm here to tell you, it looks like there's a piece of steel here. There's like five more pieces behind that. It's insane. It just, and you never stop cutting metal. And you have, uh, the access is pretty difficult. So... I totally see why nobody puts a big tire on a Miata. It's it is a total job. This is this is one of the hardest things I've ever done, and uh, just the sheer amount of work that because you can't just make them fit. I got to actually do sheet metal work to put wheel wells back in, and then all this metal I cut out. I mean, I knew this going into it, but there's going to be some amount of uh, replacement metal, you know, to strengthen the car back up. Now, admittedly, we're going to put a cage in the car, so we don't. Some of the strength that we're losing uh, doesn't doesn't really matter. And frankly, I don't think the body in this area of the car really does a lot. So like your strut tower, you know, let me walk over here. So here's your strut tower, right? So this does see some load. And then the subframe is attached to the car probably in this area, something like that, you know? There's a huge hole there. That wouldn't surprise me if that's a subframe bolt. But anyway, somewhere in this area, that's where the subframe attaches to the car. So there's a lot of load getting transferred there, but from there, it goes forward. And when you twist the car, the cage is gonna offer a lot of torsional resistance. I don't really think this sheet metal, I mean, I'm sure it contributes, but I don't think it's efficient. What I mean is it's a lot of metal for not a lot of gain. It's some gain, but I don't think it's a lot. And it's just because of the way they built it. Like it's it's kind of obvious what I, th what I think, I say it's obvious, let me take that back. What I think they did, the reason they have all these different layers of steel and the way they put them in the car back here, I think this is for crash worthiness. That's my guess, because there's multiple layers of thin metal that's pretty flexible and it's just kind of spot welded together. And I got a feeling that's so if you get in a big wreck, it can actually absorb energy, you know? That's what I think that's for, because it's really not an efficient use of uh, torsional stiffness. This beam that goes across the back here, there was some strength in that, tying both ends of the car together. So that probably did do something. And we're keeping it, but we are modifying it. So you can see that used to go like a cross, but I mean, that didn't do much. But this beam going across like this, there's the cross section of it, you can see. It just kind of came down to a point. So all we're gonna do, you can probably already guess. See if I can get a better angle, not really. All we're gonna do is when we get done cutting is we're just gonna put a flat bottom and basically get a piece of cardboard, make a template, and then lay it out in steel and just weld it. So essentially we'll turn this, instead of having like a triangle pointed bottom, it'll just have a flat bottom, like a box beam. Uh, and right now, this is not gonna show up on a video, but okay, it kinda does. That moves and shakes and you know, it lost. 90% of its stiffness by doing all this cutting, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, but we're going to get some of that back. I don't know if we'll get all of it back, but we'll get some of it back by doing that, uh, boxing it in as a beam. And we're probably going to put a little bit of bracing here and there. Um, this previously tied to the gas tank in the middle, which I don't think bracing, you know, this thing here is terrible. Like, let me put the camera here. I mean, you know, like right here, I leaned on it and it bent. I mean, this thing is, yeah, there you go. Here's a good example. It's crazy flimsy. So like, as far as bracing, that's a terrible spot to brace. But there's a seam where two different pieces of metal come together here and this looks rigid as hell. So we'll probably just do a brace straight down and it'll actually be stronger as far as the bracing goes than it was before. Cause it had a piece of, one piece of sheet metal angled that hooked to a gas tank shell. I mean, so, you know, it wasn't doing much. So yeah, we definitely got some bracing to do, boxing in, and as far as the wheel wells, we're still trying to figure this out. Um, this just keeps seemingly gets harder. Like cutting all that metal out, oh my God, we only did one side, we still gotta do this side here, and this sucks, this is piece, I mean, let me show you. This entire thing full of metal, it's hard for you to understand how many pieces are in this, uh, 
this thing. That is a ton of, not a ton, literally, but there, I mean, there's like 400 little pieces of metal. Some are big, some are small, but we have taken so much metal out. I'll throw all that on the floor later and show you guys, but it's incredible. Like we actually are probably doing some significant weight savings just by cutting all this out of here. Of course, you know, when we put the cage in, we're gonna add weight, but hopefully we'll end up with a uh, more efficient chassis and we'll have space to work on stuff. So you can tell, that's pretty awesome. We'd have direct access to the shock and we're gonna have uh, that wheel well opened up. So that's pretty cool. We got some room here now. We might actually be able to put something back here. I don't know what, but maybe some electronics or a battery or I don't know, but we'll at least have some room here. That's kind of cool. We are gonna have to build a steel wall that separates the back of the car from the front. We'll come up with something. That top of the fuel tank, we gotta seal that. Uh, but it's not the, not the end of the world. We, we're not there yet. We're still cutting metal out of the car. So this is why the cage isn't in yet. We keep having to cut metal out. And you know, to me, what seems obvious is before you start putting a bunch of metal back, you need to get all the other stuff out. So that's what we're kind of doing. And hopefully this is getting towards the end of it. We haven't really done, let's see, right here we did the seat brackets from pretty much from this point all the way forward. We haven't cut any metal off the car. And that's kind of disappointing because you know what that means. That means the back of the car is going to be really light and the front of the car is going to be heavy. And not only is that not what you want for a street car or a race car, but it's also not really what you want for a drag car, having a light rear end. So taking weight out of the car is good. Nothing wrong with that, but it would be preferable if the, some of the weight was coming out of the front. But my thought right now is that we'll get to it. We just haven't got to it yet. But it, it will happen. <clears throat> you can see in the front of the car, there's plenty of... Uh, even though a lot of it's been gutted, there's still plenty of work that could be done. That whole front pillar that goes across there, that might end up coming out and just doing like a tubular section there. I'm, I'm not sure because the windshield took to that, but we'll see. And then uh, a lot of the wiring, I've heard you can pull about 15 pounds of wiring out just by getting rid of all the stuff you don't need. And uh, what else? I'm sure it's like there's some bracing and stuff like in the corners. Let's see if there's one over here. I don't know, but that one, you can see that. That's yeah, probably going to stay. That actually might do something. But there's going to be weight. Those little bars in the door, if I ever do like NASCAR door bars, those could definitely come out because that can't be doing much. So, and then of course, not now, not probably, we're probably two years away if we're being realistic, but eventually we're going to tube the front of this car. I know after dealing with how much work it is in the back of the car, uh, we're not playing that game up here. I don't know if they have as many layers of steel and all that. I don't know if they do. I hope not. But I really think we'll just start from the firewall and chop and just tube it out. You know, just uh, I literally think it would be easier. So we'll probably do that. But like I said, it's probably two years away. We're just not there yet. Good news is, by the time we do get to doing that, our fab skills will be uh, better. So we'll be able to do a better job. Um, we're getting better all the time. This is just a learn. For me, I'm not a pro. So like when we did that fender over here, you know, that was 30, it was 22 gauge steel. I think it was 30 thousandths thick. So I mean like welding 30 thousandths thick steel, for me, that was hard uh, to get it right. So, you know, it's a good skill to have, but yeah, we're kind of building them up and getting our tools built up. So we're getting there. <clears throat> so bad news is car build's going slow, but the good news is it's, it's turning, it's going to turn out the way we were hoping. It's going to be drastically simplified. So I think it's, I don't know how much y'all can envision this. I know it's ugly because we haven't cleaned any of this, but uh, when this is finished, it's going to look so much simpler and more open back here than it previously was. And that's, that's pretty valuable. It's going to make working on the car easier. Like you can see that little thing used to hang there. Uh, oh yeah, another thing we did. Um, well, it's obvious, there's no trunk lid. We took the hinges off. In fact, we cut the thing that the hinges hooked to. So we're fully committed at this point, they're gone. So uh, I don't actually know what we're gonna do yet. My worst case scenario is we're gonna do four hood pins and just pin it and snap it down that way. Downside of that is it's gonna cost like $300 or so just for the hood pins to do that. Not my favorite option, just strictly because of cost, but it is easy to do, so there is value in that. So worst case, we'll do that. And the ones I already bought two for the front, for the hood, so we may end up just buying two more for the front and doing that up here, because then I could get rid of these hinges, which 
I don't know, they're probably not that heavy, but I don't like them. But it is nice having the hinges on the hood for car shows, but it's, I also like being able to take the hood off when you're working on it, so kind of a balance, you know, hood pins, or I, I wonder if you could do both. That, I don't know how you would do that, but that would probably be the best option, would be able to remove the hood or open the hood, either one. I don't know, that's worth looking into. I wonder if you could put like a, uh, where this pen goes or something, like maybe have this to where you could easily take that pen out and just take the hood off, where you don't need any tools, you know, like just like a little, uh, what would you call that? Anyway, like a little thing, you pop the pen and boom. Maybe we'll do something like that, that would be cool. So, anyway been a long day i tell you what we uh we've been using the angle grinder where we can and we've also been this new best friend of ours plasma cutter uh the one thing we were careful on we have our gas tank we have our uh all these hoses and stuff so at first we had left that in place and we were kind of using the angle grinder uh to cut around it oh, oh this is kind of <clears throat> way late in the video to be mentioning this um <laughs> We were not just cutting next to a gas tank. We have this bucket full of water, so a five gallon bucket, and it's just full of soaking wet rags. And you can see the floor is wet, and that's because we've been covering everything that's uh, dangerous with wet rags. So this entire fuel tank area was covered. The shocks were, see how clean this is compared to the rest of the car? That's because we had that covered. Um, anything that looked important or expensive got covered up, and we caught in the tires too. And we were constantly checking because I didn't want to light my car on fire. So we did do that. We were trying to not mess things up. But these fuel hoses, eventually we had to cut metal. The, the way the factory designed this is this pipe travels through some of the sheet metal. It's gone now, but it used to. So we ended up having to unbolt that. And I basically just kind of like moved it over here and had a clamp just bending the rubber hoses to hold it out of the way so that we could reach in there and cut. And you can see... There's still a little bit of this crap left. Uh, we're just too tired. We're going to work on that to uh, pick it up tomorrow. I don't even know how to get in there and cut it. That's that's what's frustrating. Like Some of that metal is close to the outside skin of the car. So I can't just like turn the plasma cutter on and rip it because I might just skim right through the uh, sheet metal out here. So it's going to have to be done probably with a Dremel uh, or something. I haven't really got a good plan. That's why I stopped. So, guess we'll guess we'll worry about that later or tomorrow. Plan for future problem for future Pat. Um, so yeah, uh, good progress. We're gonna keep going. We got to get this uh, finish cutting the metal out over here. We got to do all that work again on this side. Then we still got to actually cut the top of the fenders out. And I'm starting to lean more and more towards making the cuts bigger and putting an even bigger section to replace it. So we'll figure it out. Uh, don't have an answer yet, but we definitely want to make sure that whatever we put in there, we're not going to have to go back and redo it. So, for example, out here we only have an inch of clearance, but I might give it more on the wheel wells. So that if I end up needing more down the road, I only have to cut the outside. The inside's already big enough. So we may do that. Uh, anyway, been rambling long enough. Uh, guess till next time, you'll take it easy.